Joining us now is our senior counsel for global affairs, uh, former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. Mike, um, I guess start with the reaction here. <laughs> you know, you can't make this stuff up. Uh, you've now got the Attorney General appointing. There are three special counsels going right now: Durham, Her, and Smith. Uh, and and Jack Smith. So this is okay. So this is a little unprecedented territory. Your reaction to the appointment of a special counsel on President Biden's classified documents issue? Oh goodness, you're you're right. You you can't make this up. Look, given the fact that there was a special counsel appointed to review classified information that was potentially down in Mar-a-Lago in the possession of the former president, this this had to be done. I, I'll I'll be honest. I, I'm not a big special counsel fan. Um, I think the attorney general. I think that the attorney general has the responsibility and the accountability. And has to own the actions they take. You can't separate this executive branch by handing it off to someone and saying, hey, you know, I, I didn't have anything to do with this. But look, given given the way Gar- Merrick Garland has proceeded, Attorney General Garland has proceeded, uh, this had to happen. I hope that this uh, special counsel will get to the bottom. We still, we still don't know a heck of a lot about what actually happened here. We don't know if this is all of them. And we don't know why it is it took them uh, weeks and weeks and weeks to make sure that the public understood what they had from the most transparent administration in history, or at least so they say. Let me follow up with something. And by the way, I'm, I, as you can imagine, I am no fan of the special counsel statute either. And, and, and I'm one of the few lawyers in the United States that have dealt with a special counsel, and I think the, the whole system is ridiculous. Um, and it's, it's fraught with peril for anybody, any citizen, and it's like an un- unaccountable I mean, technically, they're accountable to the attorney general, but it, it, the politics going on yeah, behind yeah, the scenes yeah, you, are unreal. You have lived it. You're, you're exactly right. <laughs> but, you know, there is something we need to say here, and, and, and I've said this, and we've stressed this on the program. Whether it's President Biden or it's President Trump, if these documents aren't declassified, nobody should be handling, you know, t- you know, SCI material, top secret material at their place in Florida or their place at the beach or in in Delaware – or at their office controlled by the Chinese, you know, donated by the Chinese government. You have to, this material, SCI material, of course, any classified material could be serious. But, you know, Mike, if any of us would have done this, we would have already gotten the knock on the door. Yeah, I was, I was reminded by someone this morning who's read my book that's coming out in a couple of weeks. On page 106, I talked about exactly this. I talked about the fact that Jake Sullivan, the current national security advisor, shared highly classified information on with Secretary Clinton when I served on the Benghazi committee. And he been a soldier in E5 in the Army or a GS-12 at the Department of Energy. It's on page 106. Had he, had he done that, he wouldn't be where he is today, reading the most sensitive information that America faces. And we have no confidence he won't put it someplace that's a jeopardy game. No one should have classified information. If, if it's not worthy of classification, declassify the stuff. Let it get out to where it needs to be. But if you're charged with and have a duty to protect it, you can't take it to a place that it is not authorized to be in. And it's pretty clear that we've now had lots of senior leaders do that. Yeah, we, and which it, that, that has to stop. All right, Jordan. So one thing that's risen out of the Biden document troubles is the spotlight we've talked about before, Secretary Pompeo, on how universities receive large sums of money from foreign adversaries. And you tweeted yesterday how the CCP uh, spends billions of unreported dollars to American campuses. It's not about generosity, but espionage. We know now that the Biden uh, Penn Center received $54 million from the CCP and had uh, these classified documents located in them for at least a, a handful of at least a few years. We're still waiting to figure out that time period between where these were when that office wasn't open yet. But that being said, the fact that the CCP just wrote that $54 million check to Penn to open the Biden Center, and that's where he decided to put these documents. So there's two pieces to this, uh, Jordan. The first is the broader piece, which is, does anyone believe for a moment that that 50 million bucks went to the University of Penn because they were trying to help students be better uh, Americans? No, they, they went there to in, in conduct espionage and influence operations against all of those involved, including, likely, a sitting former vice president. Uh, that, that's what that money is for. It's what it's intended for. It's not coming from uh, a Chinese philanthropist. It's coming from the Chinese Communist Party itself. And the fact that UPenn and Biden took it um, as deeply troubling. Uh, second, uh, goodness gracious, now you've got classified information mixed with that very activity at that very location, at that very place. I don't know who all is on the staff at the UPenn Biden Center. I don't know who all had access to that. Uh, but it is often the case that the Chinese Communist Party will say, we'll provide you this money if you'll let my cousin, my son, my friend uh, be, uh, uh, be, be at that place so that they can uh, be part of that and begin to actually operate inside of that. We'll find out if that's true here. It may well not be. 
Uh, but the Chinese Communist Party is pretty sophisticated about how they spend their money, and it was not out of charity that they provided it to you, Penn Biden Center. Yeah, I was, I was thinking the same thing. I mean, usually they, when you have a gift like that, there are conditions to the gift, or at least either expressly or not. Uh, so you have to worry about that. Let me ask you this also. Um, and we don't know where this is going to go yet because it's, it's just the beginning of an investigation. But it, it's ironic to me, and I think this says something. We've got to think about this. The two candidates that are running for president right now both have special counsels investigating their uh, handling of classified documents. You still have John Durham. He's doing the investigation on uh, the F basically on the FBI and what they were doing wrong as it related to the, the Russia investigation. In one real sense here, Mike, it is this is a distraction from the bigger problem, which is governments like the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party. And I, I tie that right into your article that you've got posted at ACLJ.org. On TikTok, time to ban it. TikTok isn't just a viral videos. It's a dangerous Chinese Communist Party virus. Explain to people what's happening. If you got TikTok on your, TikTok on your phone, what, what, you, what you're doing here. As a technical matter, uh, that information that you provide, the feedback, what you punch your button, what you search for, the things you watch, how long you watch them, where you watch them from, who else is watching it alongside of you, who'd you send the message to and say, hey, you should go say this. All that information is being gathered. And that information has been gathered, stored somewhere uh, today that is not inside the United States. It's outside the United States. And the uh, Chinese intelligence service, their MSS, and the broader party more directly are in control of TikTok. And so what they'll use that information for, goodness only knows. But it is not, it is not innocent. It is not accidental. It is very intentional that they're using this to improve their systems, improve their AI, and be able to track American citizens all across the world. Uh, second, um, they're also pushing messages. They're suggesting things you should see, uh, things about Black Lives Matter operating here, things about the decline of the United States of America. So TikTok's not only being used to garner, steal, harvest information from Americans, it is pushing propaganda through their united front, through their uh, operations to change and shape America. That is, that's bad for America to allow that continue to happen. It, it should be banned. India did it. There's no reason America can't do it, too. Mike Pompeo has a great article up at ACLJ.org. Time to ban it. TikTok isn't just viral videos. It's a dangerous Chinese Communist Party virus. And we appreciate, uh, Mike, you always being with us and being part of the team here at the ACLJ. Thanks so much for your insight on this.